Inside the Twisted Mind of the Ypsilanti Ripper, The Coed Michigan Murders. Between 1967 and 1969, the Ypsilanti area of Michigan witnessed a series of crimes, as a ruthless serial killer wreaked havoc. The perpetrator, who earned monikers such as the Ypsilanti Ripper, the Michigan Murderer, and the Coed Killer, struck fear into the hearts of the local population. The killer targeted young women, subjecting them to abduction, beatings, and ultimately murder. Their bodies were callously discarded within a 15-mile radius of Washtenaw County. In response, a task force was assembled, determined to put an end to the spree of violence. John Norman Collins, born on June 17, 1947, in Ontario, Canada, would go on to commit a series of crimes that rocked Michigan. Mary Therese Flessar, a 19-year-old accounting student at Eastern Michigan University, was last seen by a neighbor as she walked toward her Ypsilanti apartment. On two occasions, the neighbor noticed a young man in a blue-gray Chevrolet attempting to engage Flessar in conversation. Tragically on August 7, Flessar's nude body was discovered by two 15-year-old boys on an abandoned farm in Superior Township. The pathologist examining her remains made gruesome findings, revealing 30 stab wounds to her chest and abdomen, as well as severed feet, missing fingers, and a forearm completely severed from her body. Investigators determined, before the body was discovered, the murderer returned to the scene, moving it an additional five feet. Nearly a year later, in July 1968, Construction workers discovered the decomposed mutilated body of Joan Elspeth Shell, a 20-year-old art student. Police inquiries, conducted two months after her murder, yielded eyewitnesses who claimed to have seen her walking with a young man on Emmett Street the evening of her disappearance. Then on March 25, a surveyor stumbled upon the nude mutilated body of Marilyn Skelton, a 16-year-old Romulus High School student, behind a vacant house. She was last seen alive outside a drive-in restaurant on Washtenaw Avenue two days before her body was discovered. At 6.30 a.m. on April 16, the body of a 13-year-old schoolgirl named Dawn Louise Basim was found beside a desolate road in Ypsilanti. She had received multiple slashing wounds across her body, then strangled to death with a two-foot-length electrical cord, still knotted around her neck. Basim had last been seen alive at 7.30 p.m. the previous evening, walking home from a friend's house located barely a mile from her own home. At each crime scene, items had been deliberately placed, indicating that the murderer had returned to the scene of the crime. Less than two months after the murder of Don Basim, on June 9, three teenage boys discovered a partially nude body of a young woman near an abandoned farmhouse. The victim was identified the following day, a University of Michigan graduate student, Alice Elizabeth Collum. She was last seen walking home towards her apartment shortly after midnight on the morning of June 8. By the spring of 1969, the public outcry surrounding the heinous murders committed by the individual known as the Michigan murderer and the co-ed killer was steadily increasing. The final murder attributed to the killer was that of 18-year-old Karen Sue Bainman, a student at Eastern Michigan University. On July 23, 1969, she was last seen alive and reported missing by her roommate, when she failed to return to their dormitory. Bainman had been seen heading to a downtown wig shop earlier that day. Three days later, Bainman's nude body was discovered face down in a wooded gully alongside the Huron River Parkway. Aware that the killer had returned to previous crime scenes to move the bodies, the police theorized that he might attempt to revisit the latest crime scene. During the early hours of the following morning, amidst a heavy and humid storm, an officer witnessed a young man walking from the gully. The officer's attempt to radio to his colleagues failed as the rain had rendered his radio inoperable. Collins' uncle, State Police Sergeant David Lake, had been on vacation with his family during Bainman's disappearance. While they were away, 
Collins had been staying at the Lake family's Ypsilanti home, for the purpose of taking care of their German shepherd. Upon their return, Lake's wife Sandra, noticed numerous paint marks covering the basement floor, and several items, including a bottle of ammonia, a box of laundry detergent, and a canister of black spray paint, were now missing. Sergeant Lake's home underwent an intense forensic examination. An investigator discovered numerous hair samples, some less than three-eighths of an inch long, next to the family washing machine. When questioned about the origin of these clippings, Lake informed investigators that his wife regularly cut their children's hair in the basement and had done so shortly before their vacation. The search of the Lake home also revealed small bloodstains in nine areas of the basement, two of which were determined to be type A, matching that of Karen Sue Bainman's. The hairs found on Bainman's belongings and those discovered in the basement of the Lake home was determined to be a match to the same individual. Information gathered from Lake's neighbors also provided additional circumstantial evidence. One neighbor, Marjorie Barnes, recalled seeing Collins leaving his uncle's home with a large laundry detergent box before the Lake family returned from their vacation. Another neighbor informed investigators that she had heard muffled screams of a young female coming from the Lake household on the evening of Bainman's disappearance. Later that day, the bloodstains recovered from the lake's basement was matched to Bainman's, leading to Collins' arrest. On August 1, 1969, John Norman Collins was formally charged with the murder of Karen Sue Bainman. The trial began on June 2, 1970, in the Washtenaw County Court building. At the trial, the prosecutors, William Delay and Booker Williams, chose to charge Collins solely with the murder of Karen Sue Bainman. Two months later on August 19, 1970, John Norman Collins was unanimously found guilty of the first-degree murder of Karen Sue Bainman. When given the opportunity to make a statement, Collins rose from his chair and delivered the following speech. I have two things to say, I think they, the jury, conscientiously tried to give me a fair trial. The jury did not take its task lightly, but, I think things were blown out of proportion. The circumstances surrounding this case prevented me from getting a fair trial. It was a travesty of justice that took place in this courtroom. I hope someday it will be corrected. Second, I never knew a girl named Karen Sue Bainman. I never had a conversation with her. I never took her to a wig shop. I never took her to my uncle's home. I never took her life. Collins was sentenced to life imprisonment with hard labor, to be served in solitary confinement at Southern Michigan Prison. Between 1972 and 1976, Collins appealed his murder conviction multiple times. However, each appeal was unsuccessful, with successive appellate judges of the Supreme Court refusing to review his conviction in October 1974. As we reflect on these tragic events, let us remember the lives lost, honor their memory, and strive to prevent such atrocities from happening again. Thanks for watching.